Hello scholars and welcome to this week's uh, lesson in art. Uh, it's going to be a two-part lesson and in both of these we're going to be talking about what's called concept design. That means artists who create something from nothing. These are artists who use their ideas to make the movies and TV shows and music videos that we watch a lot more interesting. So today, part one, we're going to be talking about costume and clothing design and how the clothing that characters wear in movies and in TV shows, music videos, even the kinds of things that celebrities wear, or even the things that we wear every day, were created by artists in the first place. And we're going to find out how we can create our own style of clothing, how we can create our own pieces that maybe we could wear or draw a picture of ourselves wearing. So to do that, we're going to look at some of the different ways that costume and clothing design is used out there in the world. Now, one of the first ways uh, this type of concept art is used is in something uh, called conceptual design for movies. And here we can see a character from the Alice in Wonderland movie. We can tell she's not a real person because of the size of her head. She has this big exaggerated heart-shaped head because she's the queen of hearts. But you might notice this first sketch, this drawing that was created by an artist was eventually made into the costume that this character wore during the movie. Now there was a little bit of computer magic to make her head look a little bit bigger than her body, but this is a real wearable outfit that first had to be designed as a piece of art because this is a fictional character. She's not really real. Now, one of the other ways that costume designs or clothing design is made is for real life fashion. And these are some drawings that were made for actual outfits that people can wear. And when an artist designs clothing, they have to think about the shape of that clothing. Is the overall shape kind of like a rectangle or does it outline the shapes of the parts of the body? Sometimes pants can be loose and flowing or maybe they're kind of tight like a pair of skinny jeans. Those are things you might want to think about while designing an outfit. I picked these three drawings because I really liked the patterns that the artists have chosen to make that uh, clothing a little bit more interesting and a little bit more exciting. Now these are pieces of clothing that were made in just black and white, but you could absolutely use any colors you want. Though it is important when you're working with clothing not to use every single color in an outfit. Usually just one or two or three different colors at the most you want to add in a single outfit. Now clothing can be used for fashion, for actual people to wear. It can be used in movies. Uh, I know a lot of my friends out there are very excited about the new Fortnite skins that are out these days, but each of these outfits, even the banana and this cat with a tiny head, these were all designed by artists. These are all outfits that don't really exist in the real world, and an artist actually designed them so that we can wear those outfits while we're playing our video games. Now, one of my favorite clothing designers, one of my favorite costume designers, is a woman whose name is Ruth Carter. And you may have seen her work before. She was the lead costume designer for the Black Panther movies. And she designed these really beautiful, these really detailed outfits for the characters who are not only royal, regal characters who had to have beautiful clothing, but also characters that had to be able to move and function because they were warriors in the movie as well. So we're going to meet Ruth Ruth Carter, and we're going to get to listen to her talk about how she came up with these colors, these designs, and these patterns that she used while making the costumes for the Black Panther movie. Hi, I'm Ruth Carter, costume designer for the Black Panther, and these are notes on a scene. We're talking about the scene where the Black Panther arrives in Wakanda after rescuing Nakia. He is greeted by his mother, the Queen Ramonda, and his sister, Shuri. Queen Mother, Princess. And then we're also talking about the Warrior Falls. The storytelling element has everything to do with honoring tradition, the different areas of Africa that have such a rich history and culture. So as T'Challa enters Wakanda on the landing pad, we're greeted by the Queen Ramonda. She's wearing what I call her shoulder mantle, including the Isikolo, Isikolo, which is the South African married woman's 
hat. And when I looked at this hat, I felt like it looked like a crown, and I really wanted it to be perfectly shaped. And the only way that we could get it perfectly shaped was to have it 3D printed, along with her shoulder mantle, which is patterned from African lace. It's put into a computer, and there are algorithms that are designing these beautiful lines and this beautiful lace, and then it's 3D printed with a flexible material so she could actually get it on and get it off and wear it. It's wearable art. Thank you, Nakia. It is so good to have you back with us. And then you have Shuri, who is wearing an Adinkra symbol. This Adinkra symbol means purpose. And she certainly has a purpose in Wakanda. Did he freeze? Like an antelope in headlights. <laughs> Over on your left, you see Florence Kasumba, who is one of our Dora Milaje. She is wearing silver metallic armor. Ryan Coogler really wanted all of the armor on the Dora Milaje to look like jewelry. And so we made sure that it had a brilliant shine. There's this area of the Dora Milaje that I like to call the harness. I wanted the harness to look like it was hand tooled. Hand tooled by the same special craftsmen of Wakanda that would make the Queen's costume because it's a great honor for someone to be a Dora Milaje. They also wear neck rings and arm rings that are from South Africa, just like the Indibele tribe. The beadwork is inspired by the Turkana tribe. So you see different regions of Africa. A comfort for your loss. Thank you, Nakia. It is so good to have you back with us. Take her to the river province to prepare her for the ceremony. Yes, General. Nakia is a war dog. She is a Nigerian princess. Nakia wears green. Right here, a river stone. And it's something that we wanted to include to signify her tribe and her country. She is a spy and she was undercover as a Muslim girl. And she wore a burqa type drape when she was a spy. And then she takes it off and underneath it all is her fighting costume. On the other side of T'Challa, we have Okoye who was played by Danae Guerrera, and she is wearing gold armor. And that signifies that she is the leader of the Dora Milaje. And then in the middle, we see T'Challa. His costume here is from Captain America Civil War. He has a triangular pattern that we infused in the suit. It's kind of like the sacred geometry of Africa. Not only makes him a superhero, it also makes him an African king. An interlope in headlights. <laughs> Are you finished? So now that we've seen some of the thought processes behind how a designer designs their clothes, we got some really great ideas from Ruth Carter there. Um, now we can start designing our own clothing. And when you design costumes, when you design outfits, the first thing you might want to figure out is whether you want to create a real life outfit, something that someone could wear in real life, or if you'd like to make something for a video game or a movie or a TV show, more of a fictional outfit, something someone might wear in outer space or in a fantasy adventure. Now, like I talked about a little bit earlier, uh, the most important things when designing an outfit are the shape, the color, the pattern, and the texture. And we can see in these designs, the shape of each of these outfits is very, very different. If I were to just outline uh, what's called the silhouette, that's the outer shape of each of these outfits. Oops, my hand slipped a little bit there on the mouse. Um, you can see that they all have really unique and really distinct designs. So when you're designing your outfits, you might even wanna think about hats or what shape is that person's hair or do they have any accessories? Are they carrying a, a purse or are they wearing a backpack? Do they have some sort of prop with them? If it's a video game character, perhaps they're holding a staff or a shield, or maybe they have a pair of giant boots that can allow them to jump further up into the air than they normally would. These are things that you can add to your outfits because they're totally up to you. Uh, you can use your creativity, you can use your imagination. They could be things that real people might wear in the real world, or they could be 
totally imaginary outfits for totally imaginary characters. So I've outlined the silhouette of these outfits just to give you an idea about the different types of shapes that your outfits might take. You can still kind of see the shapes of the people in here, but overall, um, it's really a lot of variety there. And you can design as many outfits as you'd like to. So just to give you some ideas, uh, here are some designs from a video game. Uh, here are some more designs by Ruth Carter for some of the Marvel movies, both the Black Panther movie as well as uh, some of the other Avengers movies. And here's an outfit of a space queen. Uh, her name is Queen Amidala from the Star Wars series. So your imagination is the only limit while you're creating your clothing pieces. So let's take a look at this in Seesaw and see how we can use those tools to design our own outfits on top of some templates that I've given you. All right, let's take a look. It's now time to draw. All right, so here I am in Seesaw. I've clicked on the template. Uh, and you'll notice that this template has two shapes. It has uh, the shape of a man and the shape of a woman. Um, but all the way here on the right, there are actually two pages. If you'd like to do some more kid-shaped clothing designs, you could absolutely do that. Uh, remember, you can use the Seesaw tools, this pointing tool, to make the image a little bit um, bigger if you'd like to. You'd have to unlock it first. Uh, but I'm just going to work on a couple of outfits for my adult man and my adult woman here. And the first one I'm going to design is um, maybe a video game character. I'd like to design an outfit that I think would make for a cool video game character. So one of the things you can do when you're first starting to draw is, you know, obviously choose your color, choose the size of your brush. Um, but if you'd like to give the people in your picture some features, if you'd like to draw eyes and nose and a mouth on there, you absolutely could do that. I'm going to give my character some hair up here. Um, I want to give her a nice big shape of hair up on the top here. And then I can start uh, really designing her outfit. And I'm going to have her outfit be kind of the this deep reddish purple color, kind of a magenta. Uh, now, since she's a video game character, I don't want her to be wearing a dress. That might be hard for her to run in. But I'm going to give her some armor pieces here that I'm going to draw using this magenta color. I want to give her um, some protection while she's out there in the world. Maybe some pieces of armor on her arms, some sleeve pieces. Now you might notice when you're drawing yours, these figures will be a little bit larger, so it'll be a little easier for you to draw on here. Uh, and then I want to give her maybe a purple undergarment, um, you know, kind of like the shirt under her armor here. And notice I'm using purple and pink, or purple and magenta, which are two colors that are pretty similar to each other. So these colors kind of match. They look nice with each other. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and color her pants all the way down here. And I want these pants to be kind of form-fitting, kind of tight. If I wanted to, they could have flared out. She could be wearing a dress or a skirt. She could have on, um, you know, a lot of different shaped clothing. Um, I'm actually going to give her a really big pair of boots um, just to kind of break away from her overall shape here. So here are her nice purple pants. Now, it is hard to see the different parts of her body, so if I wanted to, I could absolutely go in with a darker color and maybe trace some of these shapes just so I can see a little bit better. Totally up to you if you want to do it that way. Now, you can draw this right in the Seesaw toolbox, just like I'm doing now, or if you find it's easier, you could draw your own people on a piece of paper. You could design their clothing, color it with whatever tools you might have laying around, and then you could take a picture of that and send it to me on Dojo that way. Either way works. Either way is fine. Um, so now I think she looks a little better with the outlines here. And I'm actually just going to add a pattern of little stripes down the side of her leg just to make her costume a little bit more decorative. Something like a pattern uh, isn't usually a big change. Uh, you know, I'm just making these little marks, these little lines going down the sides of her legs. But it really does make her outfit look a little bit more real, a little cooler, a little bit more fashionable. Um, so I'm just going to move. Notice how my colors are all kind of in the same neighborhood here on the color wheel. Uh, so now I'm going to pick kind of a dark blue color for her boots and her gloves. Like I said, I'm going to do some nice big boots. Um, if this were a video game character, maybe 
she has some sort of special boots. Um, maybe they have rockets on the bottom of them so she can fly. I think that's what I'm going to add to this just to make her a little bit more interesting. I think it would be a really cool feature for a video game character to have. So I could go up here, add some yellow. Maybe I can have little like rocket boots coming out down here. It looks like she's flying. Um, and then I'll pick that dark blue color again and I'll give her some nice safety gloves here. Um, if she is going to be flying around on those boots, I might want to give her uh, some goggles. So I'm actually going to cover over her eyes here, give her some goggles to wear. I could give her a headband that kind of matches her armor to keep her hair in place while she's flying. And I think this is a pretty cool character and a pretty nice costume design. So go ahead and design um, either one of these characters, both of these characters. You could do the characters from both pages. Um, if you want to make a lot of these, if you want to practice lots and lots of costumes, you can actually click on these three little dots on each page. And you could, once you click on that, uh, it'll bring up a little option to duplicate the page. And that will actually make another copy of that page if you want to keep making costume after costume after costume for those characters. Remember, once you're all done, if you'd like to label it, you can definitely use the typing tools. You could name your character. If you want to write the name of your character with a pencil, maybe her name is uh, Darla. So I could say she's Darla. Uh, I think that's a cool name for her. And then when I'm all done, I'm going to click this green check in the corner and make sure my work is submitted. All right. Thank you very much. And I can't wait to see your drawings.